Yeah, so we're just going to um, have a quick look at um, a rib fracture. So this happened three weeks ago. Uh, fell over doing a silly thing in a river, uh, chasing after a fish with a fly rod and uh, sore in the ribs since. So normally uh, very easy to find these. Um, the patient will tell you where it is, where the fracture is, they'll point to it. It's much easier than looking at an x-ray where you don't really have that sort of guidance. The patient will put their finger on it and say that's where it is and you put your probe exactly there and the key is to get used to being able to follow ribs around, the curve of ribs. So we'll do that. Um, you want just show me where, where it's a bit sore? Kind of in there. Yeah, thanks. Got that. So we just pop the... That's the way. We just pop that on there. Oh, there we go. So it's, and we're on right on the fracture. So you can see that kind of immediately. Uh, that's, so this is a rib and muscle on top, skin up there. We can follow the ribs sort of along like that. See, you follow it along and then you see an interruption. So that's pretty obvious. Make it bigger if we want to. There's the fracture. Three weeks old, but the, you know, fresh ones look a bit like that. So that's how you do it. And you can look in between the ribs. We're still in the following the rib. The line of the ribs, look in between the ribs. That's the rib below. We go below that, we see the lung down there between the ribs. And if you, of course, you can go transverse on these things, and you see the rib shadow, can't see into bone, so it's just your shadow. Then you see uh, a space and the next rib shadow. There's the pleura there, you can see it moving, that sort of crawling ant, ant sign. You can check for a pneumothorax uh, with the crawling ant sign or with your M mode, which is like the waves on the beach sign. You'll know about that. So we know there's no pneumothorax. Always check for a pneumothorax in the, in the upper zone of the front chest too, because that's where the pneumothorax tends to lodge if it happens. But anyway, we've, we can do that. Um, and you know, just get used to see how I just turning on the rib and following the rib one way follow it back the other way, but just follow where the patient says it's painful. And that's your identification of a rib fracture. And if you think a rib fracture doesn't make any difference to the management, well just ask the patient and they will say, it makes a huge difference to be able to see that and just to be able to get that clarity. You're a starlight. So yeah, we always get this question, you know, what are the, what's the point of ultrasounding ribs? Why, why are you doing that? And isn't it, doesn't it change the management or not change the management? Actually, the answer, I think the answer is very simple. I think there's most kind of practitioners are still in complete denial. Uh, I was until started ultrasounding ribs. I mean, the first thing you see is the patients are absolutely delighted to see you actually taking the injury seriously and looking at the area where it's sore and pointing out to them, yes, there's a fracture. Look, there it is there. Here's some ex more examples. You know, you can easily see that. Patients love to look at that. Um, so that's one thing. Yeah, clinically, does it change things uh, in terms of how long it takes it to get better, the outcome? I think if you tell somebody who's a worker, you know, a physical manual worker, a heavy job, that they don't have a rib fracture, or they do, I think it affects the way that they plan their time off, how much what they tell their boss, how much they're able to do. Um, but actually, and maybe if you're an elderly person, you see three or four decent rib fractures, uh, you are more likely to think about admitting them. Uh, must remember that rib fractures are much more accurately seen on uh, an ultrasound than an x-ray. And I like the 80-20 rule. It might be a bit outdated now, but, you know, uh, rib fractures, 20% are visible on an x-ray, 80% are visible on an ultrasound. So uh, if you're ever thinking of x-raying in order to check a, for a rib fracture, well, think again. And secondly, you know, pneumothoraxes, which are much more accurately discovered on ultrasound. Of course, you can make the uh, point that if it's too small to see on an x-ray, it doesn't really matter. But I just think it's nice to be able to look and show the, show the patient and make your diagnosis. 
So it's about making a diagnosis. We shouldn't shy away, shouldn't be frightened of making a diagnosis. Same question arises, you know, why maybe we should be scanning ankle sprains. And you say, well, it doesn't really matter, you know, if the ATFL is ruptured and the CFL is okay or not. But ask a physio. Ask somebody who's tasked with the rehab and who actually knows about this anatomy and knows where these uh, sprains lie and know the um, and have techniques that help to strengthen the CFL or to spare the CFL while you're waiting for it to heal, concentrate on other areas. Physios love to have that diagnosis. So, so this is a, a long-winded answer, but I think this um, weak argument that we don't really need to make a diagnosis because it doesn't affect the outcome. If we applied that to every branch of medicine, every aspect of medicine, you know, there's a lot of times where the actual diagnosis doesn't affect the outcome where we uh, still pursue it with intensity and integrity. I think that's partly uh, a change in mindset that we require. Ultrasound's giving us all this extra ability. You look inside the patient and we make a diagnosis, actually see things that we were previously only, only guessing at. The sprained knee. You want to have a look at the collateral ligament of the knee. We should be doing that. We shouldn't be leaving that for uh, some uh, specialist ultrasounding facility to do for us with a one month waiting list. We should be doing that at the point of care. We have the anatomy, we're taught that at med school. We pretty much uh, ignore it when we let it slide because we don't find it useful. Uh, we need to regenerate that, we need to get younger people coming through doing this st stuff. And you know, back to rib fractures, let's just get on and uh, diagnose these things. Let's look at the lung you know, so simple to do. Let's look at, uh, with the B mode, let's look with the M mode. Plenty of uh, places you can go on uh, you know, ultrasound sites to help you look uh, at how to do lung ultrasounds. And um, yeah, and let's get uh, bring our anatomy back. You get a real kick out of that and see your satis patient satisfactions scores really soar.